Coming up on week four fantasy football and the tight end position is still gross. And that's exactly why we got to do our best to figure this one out by going through the top 15 tight end rankings for week four fantasy football. Starting out with our first tier of guys here. Listen, George Kittle is injured right now. He may or may not play this game. The bottom line is if he plays this game, he's my number one. He's one of the only tight ends that's went nuclear this week, and we already know that he has a history of being able to go nuclear. So if he does play this game, I don't care if he's at 100% health. I don't care if he's at 75. If he plays this game without Debo, without McCaffrey, with potentially an injured Brock Purdy, I want George Kittle here versus the New England Patriots. This is simply just to say that he's capable of going nuclear. There's no, there's no consistency at the tight end position unless it's consistently sucking. So I'd rather take the shot on a guy I know has upside. And Brock Bowers is in a very similar situation. If actually, like you could probably put Brock Bowers in his own tier of consistency right now. He's been the only consistently targeted tight end outside of like Trey McBride, basically. Brock Bowers is going to be fine. Like he's honestly the guy I'm least worried about out of the Las Vegas Raiders fantasy options, regardless if it's Aiden O'Connell or if it's Gardner Minshew that we see on Sunday. Now, from all accounts, looks like we're going to see Gardner Minshew again. But if he has another bad game, what's to say they don't pull him at half and put in Aiden O'Connell? The only guy I think is bust proof in that offense is Brock Bowers. So the matchup versus Cleveland, not particularly great, not particularly bad with a banged up Cleveland defense. I want Brock Bowers at number two. Dropping out to our next tier right here. Dallas Goddard at number three at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now listen, with Dallas Goddard here, he's in a situation where last week a lot of people were going to overreact based on his game. Obviously, 10 catches for 170 yards is nothing to mess around with. That's amazing points at the tight end position. And listen, he may very well be in line for another great game. I think he is because looks like A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith are going to miss this game at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the secondary is not particularly strong for Tampa Bay. So Dallas Goddard, based on last week, he's going to be important in this offense again as far as the target share goes. So I do think he's in line for another good week. But I will say, Dallas Goddard, that was like his best game of his entire career. So we're not going to say that he's going to do that all over again the following week. Now at number four and five, Jake Ferguson and Dalton Kincaid. Jake Ferguson came back, looked great. Like, I, I, and that's a problem because I told a lot of people to sit him last week because I wasn't sure how he'd look off injury. But tonight against the Giants here, I've always said this with Jake Ferguson. This is why I liked him preseason. Dak Prescott loves a good tight end. <laughs> it's been made into a joke, but it's true. Like, he loves throwing to a tight end. And Jake Ferguson's been really good for Dallas. So Jake Ferguson at the Giants tonight. I do think the matchup's pretty strong here. And I think Jake Ferguson has another good week tonight. And then Dalton Kincaid at Baltimore on Sunday night. Dalton Kincaid finally had some Dalton Kincaid managers relatively happy, I would say. Compared to what we had been getting the first two weeks and what we got week three... It was a great week for Dalton Kincaid. Now, obviously, he didn't, like, it wasn't a massive fantasy production. It was, like, 11 and a half points in a full, in a half PPR format. So, it wasn't anything to get, like, jumping up and down excited over, right? But Dalton Kincaid, the reality is that every week his targets have went up. And at the Baltimore Ravens this week, it's going to be a much more competitive matchup in all likelihood. So, that means he'll be playing for the full four quarters, unlike he has the last two weeks. The last two weeks, they've destroyed their opponents, so they haven't had to play their starting guys the last two weeks in the full game. I think this week's different. We get a full four quarters with Dalton Kincaid, and I do think that's going to be a separating factor. And make sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel to show your support, because I'm doing everything I can to get us all ready at one of the hardest positions of fantasy football. Drop it out to our next tier right here. Sam Laporta and Travis Kelsey at number six and seven. Sam Laporta obviously is questionable. He's got a low ankle sprain. 50-50 shot. He was limited in practice on Wednesday. This video is coming out on Thursday. The reality with Laporta is that he, as disappointing as it's been with Laporta, and it's been very disappointing, mind you, it's not as if he's irrelevant, though. Like, he's still maintaining relevancy in this offense. It's just not as good as it was last year because he's not hitting on touchdowns. So Sam Laporta, even though it's not been as great, he's still been consistently targeted, and against the Seahawks' defense, it's not the, that the matchup's great, but the De Detroit Lions offense is great. So one of these weeks, Laporta will have a great week, and I don't want him on my bench for it. Travis Kelsey, listen, if we're being honest with ourselves, maybe this is even a little bit too high. Travis Kelsey has just simply not been involved. That's just the reality here. And I, I've been sniffing this one out for over a year. 
Travis Kelsey, it, it shouldn't even take sniffing out. Like, the dude's in his mid-30s, man. And I think, honestly, there's an effort for them to save him for the playoffs. I think that's what's going on. I don't think they're trying to overuse him too early. Now, again, with Travis Kelsey, I'm still going to start him over most guys because I do think he will have a really good game at some point, and then people are going to be all over him again. He's got the name value at the Chargers here, I think, against the weaker Chargers team without all their starters on offense. I think there's good potential here, but he's had good potential every week because he plays with Mahomes, so we're not going to overrank Travis Kelsey. Kyle Pitts at 8 and 9 is Brenton Strange of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Kyle Pitts, I, I would rather play Kelsey over Pitts just because I know K Kelsey could go nuclear. I still think he's got that in him. I think he's got at least two games of that this year. Kyle Pitts has been more consistent, though, no question about it. He's been more consistently involved in the offense, and he's just been better in fantasy so far. So versus the Saints, I don't think the matchup is great this week. I don't think it's a great opportunity. And again, I just don't really see the ceiling there for Kyle Pitts. He's just not the guy that we, and me included, thought he was going to be coming out of college. So I think I'm just coming to grips with that one faster than some others are. And with Kyle Pitts, I'm not just going to rank him in the top five just because of the guy I saw in 2021 coming out of Florida. He's here at number eight against the tough Saints defense. Number nine with Brenton Strange. At the Houston Texans, listen, the Jacksonville offense stinks. It's really, really bad. But the one positive thing that you could take away is that without Evan Ingram, Brenton Strange has been involved for two weeks, and he got in the end zone last week. So Brenton Strange does play a position that, let's face it, similar to Dak Prescott a little bit, Trevor Lawrence likes to throw to a tight end. So whether it's whether it's Evan Ingram or whether it's Brenton Strange, Brenton Strange is just involved right now. Evan Ingram doesn't look like he's going to be ready to go in week four. So Brenton Strange, in all likelihood, gets another start. And Jacksonville's so bad, they're going to continue to be in pass-first mentality because they're going to try to catch up with teams. That increases Brenton Strange's ceiling in fantasy, and, but his floor is ultimately just not that high on a bad offense. Playing with, let's face it, not a very good quarterback. But I'll tell you who is a good quarterback. Patrick Mahomes and his line on underdog would not indicate it because they're shortchanging him at 0.5 total yards. That's one you need to take advantage of and hit the higher on. And if you haven't taken advantage of underdog yet, go down in the comments, grab that link that's there. And when you use code FN to sign up for underdog and deposit at least 10 bucks, They'll match your first deposit 50% up to $1,000 of bonus cash, and you'll be able to take advantage of the free Patrick Mahomes line right there. Now, dropping down to our next tier right here, I've got Isaiah Likely at number 10 versus the Buffalo Bills. Listen, I prefer him at this point over Andrews. It's not even that he was better than Andrews last week. He actually kind of was, but like the reality is that when you actually take three weeks, Isaiah Likely has been on the field more than Mark Andrews has. And again, I said this after the week one game. Is there a possibility that that Andrew's just injured right now? Like maybe there's something going on from that car crash that he had before the season that's lingering right now. I think it's very possible. But either way, we obviously saw what likely can do in week one. So in a more competitive matchup in a primetime game, which is what he did in week one, maybe it happens again. I'm okay with starting Isaiah Likely, to be honest with you. I'm starting him in a dynasty league. And again, at this point, he's just the better tight end option in Baltimore right now. Cole Komet and Taysom Hill at number 12. Cole Komet obviously comes out really out of nowhere last week and does really well in fantasy. Again, I, it's sort of like the Dallas Goddard thing where it's like even harder to count on this one in the future because Cole Komet, like Romo Dunze is going to be like he's going to be playing. DJ Moore's playing. So it's like at best, he's the number three option of this offense. So with Cole Komet, I just don't trust the consistency. I like the matchup versus the Rams, but I just don't ultimately trust the consistency being on the side of Cole Komet. So long term, I just think Cole Komet's a worse option. But I do think that ultimately, like off the week that he had, if Caleb Williams could find any sort of like continuity in this offense and just any kind of consistency maybe it's going to come through Cole Komet especially while Keenan Allen's out so I think Cole Komet just based on that needs to be considered and Taysom at number 12 at the Atlanta Falcons this is a shot call this is a shot call right here I think I, I always say this Taysom Hill what we get from him is two games that are massive at some point in the fantasy season, people go crazy over it. They pick him up. Then they try to chase the points. It's hard to do that. I'm trying to predict one of those games right now, and I think it's the Falcons. Listen, Kamara didn't practice on Wednesday. 
So if Kamara doesn't play, Taysom will get carries, especially at the goal line. Even if Alvin Kamara plays, maybe they limit his workload and play Taysom more at the running back position. He's already gotten carries every single week, and he's gotten targets every single week as well. So you give him more opportunities, especially at the goal line, that's when Taysom can go nuclear. I think Taysom Hill, this is the shot call I'm making this week. I think he's a decent option here at number 12. And then dropping now to our last tier. This is who I prefer Taysom over because we're really just throwing something at the wall to see if it sticks with Tyler Conklin, Mike Gesicki, and Zach Ertz. Conklin has not been consistent. He did have a breakout game in week three. Ultimately, I can't trust the workload. And the matchup versus Denver is not particularly ideal. Denver's defense is good. I keep saying this to people. They're a good defense. Now, again, if he can maintain the involvement that he had, in week three, he's going to be a solid tight on option moving forward. But the, and the reality is like with Aaron Rodgers, like over his career, he's liked to throw to a tight end he can rely on. So maybe Conklin, he's starting to rely on him a little bit more and he becomes more of an option. Right now, I'm going to have him at 13. 14, Mike Isicki. What was really interesting about last week was that I was expecting to see his targets go down since T. Higgins was coming back. But with T. Higgins back, Mike Isicki was still involved. At the Carolina Panthers this week, the matchup's great. So it's ultimately down here with Mike Kosicki because I don't ultimately trust what his involvement's going to be like week to week with T. Higgins now fully back. So we'll have to see it another week. I want to see more involvement again this week because I do have a feeling that it's going to take a downturn and we might see it this week. And then rounding it out at 15, Zach Ertz here. Actually been a really consistent target for Jaden Daniels. Now, the only problem with Zach Ertz is that he doesn't have the speed that he used to. He doesn't have the athleticism he used to. He's just not a very high upside player at this point of his career. Again, he's older too. It's okay. But the reality is like he's been getting lots of close to the line of scrimmage over the middle of the field production here for the Washington Commanders. He's been a relatively stable option for Jaden Daniels. So just based on that down here at 15, you've got to take the stability here. And there's a revenge game narrative at the Arizona Cardinals this week. So maybe you can capitalize on that. But either way, Ertz has been really consistent in fantasy so far. So let me know how your lineup is looking so far this week. And if you want to see the top 12 kickers this week in fantasy, click on this video right here.